All right, here we go. Man Eater on the Xbox One X. Uh, game developed by Tripwire. Uh, only 6.2 gig of game data required for your hard drive. So not a massive game in any way. And it took me 17 hours and one minute to fully finish uh, the game at a 100% level, which was awesome. So just like any other review, uh, I'm going to break this down in the exact same way. And if you're if you're a regular of mine, you know exactly how we do it. The very, very first thing that I look into is pretty much the choice of music used, the soundtrack. I'm a massive fan of music within games, and I do feel soundtracks carry the biggest weight um, over the majority of things that I look at in my review. And I feel music can make or break a game easily, depending on how good the soundtrack is. So the soundtrack in this game is just... It's, I wouldn't say is over the top explosive or anything like that. Um, I would say that the soundtrack for this game is in the middle. You know, it's not weak. It's not too strong. It's around the moderate level. When you activate your ultra abilities, uh, you do get a really uh, uh, upbeat music tone that plays with that build itself. And that, that does make it a little bit more spicier, if, if, if that's the right word to use. But overall, the, the, the soundtrack is just, it's, it's, it's baseline. It's, it's not, like I said, it's not over the top explosive and it's not bare minimum. It's, it's within a comfortable middle. Uh, and for me, I'm fine with that. You know, I, I am fine with that. I think they could have done a little bit more if they wanted to, but it worked well for the type of game that you're playing. Uh, and it didn't overshadow the game or undershadow the game in any single way itself. So I'm just going to say the soundtrack itself, it, it works well with the game. They they did a great job with, with what they had. Um, if they wanted to go above and beyond, they could have done, I'm, I'm guessing, because like I said, there were, there were a few moments within the game itself where it got just a little bit tedious. It did. The effects... <laughs> fantastic the, the 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 audio effects in this game are very loud <laughs> so you might you might want to actually turn down the game at some stage because i'm i wear a headset and i'm plugged into a 5.1 um amplifier to give me the best quality that i can but the, the the ripping sounds and the gnawing sounds that come from from your shark itself are all on point it's it's, it's gruesome as well especially when you hear the audio coming from the npcs and they're running and screaming and stuff like that but i can't fault the effects at all even the um elemental effects that my shark had because i went full lightning the crackling effect of the lightning and when i used my ultra as well they all sounded fantastic the bombs sound great the gun you can hear it all go off uh, the boat noises and everything like that can't fault it one bit not going to dock any points off of it i think it works extremely well and uh, and a big thumbs up on my end um voice acting now can someone in chat remind me who the narrator was from rick and morty um but a load of people uh, came in during today's uh, playthrough review and yesterday's playthrough review to all tell, you know, they're like, oh, I know the, who, the, who the narrator is in this game. So he's a very, very, very popular known person from the amount of feedback that people have said um, within chat. Was it Chris something? Jerry something? I don't know. One, I, one, one of the... one. Chris, thank you. Chris Parnell. Thank you, Black Rose. Um, he's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> throughout the game he chucks out a, a quite a bit of uh witty banter and it's 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 humorous it really is i think he could have gone the extra mile and done a lot more talking with, while you're swimming around maybe throwing some like useless facts about sharks and just mocking things within the game i think that would have been really cool uh but the voice acting i can't fault it at all all the npcs sounded great even the unique mini bosses that came in and during the cutscenes itself you know the big main boss of the get of the game that wants to hunt you down and kill you he sounds absolutely fantastic, and I, I, I'm not knocking any points off. It, 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 to me, it all, it all mixed very, very, very well, and I'm, I was very happy with it. Uh, graphics and texturing. Now, the graphic engine that they used is the Unreal 4 engine. Uh, it's an engine I know pretty bloody well. To be honest, I play a ton of games and I've seen the Unreal Engine go through its stages, uh, f even with the old Unreal Engines. And this game, in terms of looks, it's stunning. 
It is beautiful. And don't, and don't forget, when I stream, I'm streaming in 4K as well. So any games that support 4K, you guys are going to see it in stream. I do um, what's called 4K resampling. So it's a 4K feed, which is then uh, reduced in size to 1080p for, for the mixer stream itself. But the quality is kept, and it looks absolutely stunning. The... Uh, under the water, it is in some areas. It's very dark and gloomy and a bit spooky, especially when you're going through some of the under pipe tunnels and stuff like that. It's, it gets really doom and gloom. But the graphics in this game is stunning. It's so beautiful. There's so many vibrant, bright neon colors that they use under the water. Some blues and greens and oranges and reds, and it looks really phenomenal under the water. Um, I can't fault them in any way with how the game looks graphic wise but in terms of texturing we noticed some texture glitches within the game itself uh, and we noticed it yesterday during yesterday's stream that the sand was flickering blue and yellow a random it was, it was flickering all over the place itself so it's not perfected there there is some combing out that they actually need to do uh to ensure that we don't see that sort of texturing errors ever again itself um but in terms of the overall quality of, of the game itself it's, it's stunning really 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 beautiful um weather effects we didn't get any and that's a real shame in my honest opinion this game could have really done with some thunderstorms some thunder and you know thunder and lightning heavy rain some snow you know you're out in the ocean for crying out loud you know it does rain out there and i feel i feel this game could have done with some really awesome like weather effects or or a tsunami effects or typhoon effects you know just something just to spice it up a, a weather environment system would have been really cool there is a day and night cycle uh so you'll be swimming around doing your mission you do you know doing what you're doing as a mission itself and you'll notice it it, it it get darker and then go back to light so there is a day and night cycle that they utilize but they don't utilize no weather effects and i think that's a missed opportunity right there in my honest opinion um because again, in some of the parts of the game, you are out in the open sea and it does rain. Trust me, I know. <laughs> it does rain and it does get windy. So it would have been nice to have weather effects within this game. I think it would have added to it and added to the experience. Um, and without it, it you know, it, it's, it's kind of doled it out a little bit because it's basically just day and night and that's it. Nothing more. Gameplay. Oh, no, sorry. Character model design, any glitches and bugs? Now, your shark, um, as it evolves, it changes in size and shape and design. Uh, and you also have um, you also have certain uh, mutagen transformations itself. So, like I said, I, I was a full shock electronic shark. Um, so, the head, the fin, the tail, the body and all that were completely customized. And my, my shark looked amazing at the end of it. It really did. Uh, you've got a shadow effect shark as well. So, you could basically could be a faster swimmer with poison if you wish to or you could be a tank shark with all bone armor all around and your teeth are much bigger and your your skin is all is all hammered up it looks really 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 cool um so there is a there is a, a fair amount of customizing in this game i'd say fair but i wouldn't say a lot there is a fair amount um, but within the character model designs, the shark looked fantastic. No matter what what um, uh, customizing options I went with, um, the NPCs, you know, a lot of them were very, you know, bland and very repetitive, very universal. There, there wasn't that much variety within the NPCs. Um, I think I ate the same woman about a hundred times, <laughs> or maybe more, maybe less. I don't know, but. The, with the NPC characters that are running around, but, uh, not talking about the bosses, because the bosses, they all look different and they're all unique in their own way. D different voice actor and different image and different look. But in terms of the NPCs that are scattered around, um, a, a bigger variety would have been nice just so it, it, it doesn't feel apparent that they use the same skin all over the place. Ooh, glitches and bugs. I During my 17 hours and one minute of gameplay... I did not encounter any 
glitches or any crashes within the game itself. Obviously, I noticed the texture bug that they had with the terrain. It was all flickering different colors, which looked real fucking weird. Um, but overall, there wasn't any game. Like I said, there was no game crashes. There was no freezing. Uh, a slight frame drop when a lot of craziness was going on. When there was loads of people, loads of boats and me flapping about all over the place trying to hit everything all at once. But there wasn't... Yeah, there wasn't anything that I'd say, you know, my, like my character getting stuck, for example, and I'd have to reload the game or the game crashing or and booting me to the Xbox dashboard, which happens quite a lot with with new releases itself. Um, but I never encountered anything that was game breaking in any way. There were some NPCs that would get stuck as they were walking across the bridge and that was humorous as hell. Um, but overall, there was nothing game breaking from my gameplay itself. So if you are experiencing game issues where the game is crashing all the time or it's very, very, very buggy, then just follow the normal protocol, uninstall the game, reinstall it and see if it helps for you. Uh, because I didn't encounter any that broke the game myself. That's, that's just my opinion. Uh, gameplay and mechanics. I'm not going to lie. Swimming around, you know, certain parts of the, uh, the ocean and also small ravines and small rivers uh, and eating everything that I can think of, as in turtles. Dolphins, or, or sorry, seals, hammerhead sharks, whales, parrot birds. I don't, you know, just going around and eating things, even humans, it's hilarious. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's hilarious. Especially when you attack the humans on the beach because they think they're safe and you drag them into the water and you can hear them gargling water. It's hilarious. So, gameplay it, it is definitely fun. It takes a little bit of warming up. So, at the beginning of the game, it's, you're probably, it's going to be a bit slow. So, you're probably going to be like, meh, meh, this is boring. It is slow at the beginning because you don't have a lot, of, you don't have any of your um, customizing options. You don't have any of your mutagens, any of your organ ab uh, abilities, and all that lot. So, it's slow at the beginning, but the gameplay picks up. It does. I'd say about. About once you're about 20% in and you've got more some of your customizing abilities itself it opens up more variety for you and as we all know the more variety that you give a player the the, the more fun it gets because there's more options to go with um, but the game starts off slow builds up and gets better and better as you play throughout the game itself and it does trust me it gets fun as hell but my hands are so cramped up <laughs> with all the buttons that you're pressing itself but gameplay Slow at the beginning, gets fun as you go throughout the game, but there is a ton, and I mean a ton, of repetitiveness. And that's one of its biggest faults right off the get-go. You'll find that you're ending up doing so many side missions and so many side quests that are just the same over and over and over again. And it does get boring when you're doing the same thing. It does. That's just a simple fact. Um, so they, I feel that they could have done a little bit better with the quests to add more variety, maybe to get you to do certain tricks maybe as well, like jumping through hoops, maybe reward you extra points and stuff like that. You don't get any of that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it could have been improved and that's something that we're going to talk about a little bit further as I go through the notes because I have written a few of it down. Um, replayability and game difficulty there is definitely replayability within this game itself you might want to do different builds as you're going through the game but the game does give you that option to change on the f on the fly really you just go to your base and then you can switch out your bone armor set and go with the shadow set or switch that out and go with a hybrid of shadow and lightning it's completely up to you uh, but there is a lot of collectibles that you can collect within the game. You've got license plates that you can go around and eat. You've got um, locations that are scattered around all the whole game. Basically little marker signs that when you knock. Uh, the majority of them that we found, they're, they're hilarious movie references. We had It the Clown movie reference, uh, the Titanic reference. Um, th there, there was so many movie references in this game. It made it fun trying to find them all. Uh, there were UFOs under the water. <laughs> so I I'm definitely going to say uh, th this is a, a, a great game if you want to just swim around and find all of the collectibles because it is fun to do them. Um, and if you're a movie buff like me and you love watching your movies, you're going to know the majority of the references that you find as well. And they're going to make you giggle while you play it. <sighs> game difficulty. Uh, now... I prioritize side missions and side quests over anything else. 
I will never just go from story mission to story mission to story mission and then get the game over and done with. That's not how I play games. Um, and I found that at around about the 70% game mark, I was very OP. Because I did all the side quests, because I looked for all the bonus crates that had extra loot in them and all the signs and all the uh, license plates, I was very, very, very buffed up and very powerful. Uh, so I, I found the game quite easy from the 70% mark onwards because it, I, I was maxed out. Um, but it also d depends on what sort of gamer you want to be while you're playing this. Do you want to do the grinding or do you just want to skip the grind fest and go straight to story, 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 story? And if you do that, I feel you're going to have a little bit of a tough time, especially doing the mini bosses as some of the mini bosses come out and they're like 20 something levels above the maximum level in the game for your shark. So it's, it's, it's completely down to you. If you want to make it a, a survival hard game, you can do. If you want to make it a simple, fun, easy game, you can do. It's completely up to you how you do it. Uh, but the game difficulty, it, it, it's definitely there. And it's, it is definitely manageable. If you find that you're, you're struggling too much, just spend time leveling, grinding, getting bigger and stronger and increasing your defense. And you'll be 100% you'll be fine. <sighs> any game customization and stats building as i mentioned earlier on the game customization is fair um you've basically got three key sets and and then obviously uh the void set which is basically wearing nothing uh you've got lightning you've got poison shadow and you've got bone i feel they could have done more i feel that those three alone is minimum i think at least two more builds would have been pretty cool because it also adds to the customization of your shark and it makes your shark a lot more unique when you're swimming around and and you're you you, you know you're utilizing uh different traits from different builds um uh, i thought <laughs> in my mind i thought they could have done a funny like garbage build where you've got like bin bags on your fins uh and you've got like rope hanging off of your your tail or you've got an anchor hanging on you or you know i thought they could have done a garbage build but have fun with it where you're basically completely dressed up in in rubbish <laughs> but like i said these are just ideas these are just ideas i think two at least two more variety builds would have been fair no more than fair i think what you get right now is is minimum fair but two more bills would have made it better in my opinion just my opinion though um there are no accessories that you could put on your shark and i think that's a missed opportunity as well so you could have been swimming around and you find these loot boxes that are under the water you could have smashed them open and you could have got like mini little trinkets that you could hook onto your shark um you know just like fishermen on the end of their hooks they've got all different sort of uh, accessories to help with them fish i think they could have done a variety of those and or a variety of just humorous accessories and just allow you to hook them onto your shark to, to decorate your shark in, in in a more unique way again adding to the humor and adding to uh, the uh customization within the game Ooh. <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> um story if applicable the story wasn't over the top it was a it was pretty much a revenge story um i don't really talk too much about the story because i don't want to ever spoil it for anyone uh but it's it's a revenge story that's that's pretty much what it is it didn't you know it was extremely predictable because you knew what was going to happen <laughs> you knew what was going to happen right from the very beginning um but yeah it, the story was fun it was, it had a bit of comedy in it. it. It made me giggle some of the times itself. But like I said, it was very, very predictable. Uh, I wouldn't say it was like extremely well written because like I said, you knew what was going to happen. Um, they probably could have done a lot more with the story, maybe evolve it just a little bit more. But I think they played it safe. Um, more than anything else, I think they just played it safe. Online co-op modes and if they do features and stability right this game has no online co-op or no local co-op and that i feel in my opinion is a big negative if i could have played this game with a friend it would have been 
flipping hilarious. <laughs> it would have been really cool to swim around with a friend. And now you could do two separate stories for that if you wanted to. You could have a single player experience and then you could have a co-op experience where you allow online and local co-op. So a friend could swim around with a friend. I think that would have been an amazing add-on to this game. And it would have also added on to the content and, and also the amount of time that's spent on the game as well. So I feel 100% no online co-op and is, is a massive missed opportunity in this game. Massive. So we can't talk about stability online because there is no online and there are no extra modes. So we can't talk about that either. Um, they could have done some more, like I said, they could have done some more things in the main game itself where you could have done like a swimming trial. You could have done like a, a trick shots uh, trial where you can do flips through hoops and speed rings and stuff like that. But there's none of that in this game. And again, in that, in my opinion, is a missed opportunity. <sighs> purchase price versus a digital pricing and value of content. Now, the purchase price for the physical... I can get for $32.85. So not a full price AAA title because if it was if it was full price, you're looking at 40 to 45 quid as an average. Uh, and the digital price surprised the hell out of me because the digital price is $33.49. So they are both super neck and neck with each other. And you know what? I'm actually, I'm very proud of them for doing that that way. So... You can get the physical copy or the digital copy and they're around the same pricing. Where trend-wise, it tends to be that the physical copy is £50 and the digital copy is £60 because they just want to squeeze every penny they can at you. Um, the important question is though, is there value for content within this game? Is this game, in my honest opinion, worth the 30, let's just say £33 average price point? And if you if you want my honest opinion, I will I would say no, but we'll go a little bit more into that in a second once I've gone through my notes. So we managed to get at least nearly a whole page. Uh, this is just again extra stuff added into the review to give it more context. Uh, game is launched on all four consoles: Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, and PC. So you can play it on whatever you want. Um, have a look i did like the loot color system that they use which is very similar to loot box systems that they use in shooters and also borderlands with certain guns it goes up in color tier i like that as a system um the ai targeting is unrealistic yeah okay you'll notice this quite a lot during this game that the ai rarely miss and you have to remember you're underwater swimming at a very high speed and they rarely miss you. They can spot you very easily. You could you could be hiding in grass and um, and garbage and all that lot. You could be really hiding in the shadows, and they'd be like, "There he is." And their targeting system is so quick and accurate that you'll get hit and you'll die a lot. You will die a lot, especially at the beginning of the game, because they just don't bloody miss. And I actually don't like that at all because it it makes it very unfair. And if they could, I don't know, mess with their accuracy a little bit by by hitting the NPCs with like a 20% a miss chance on their shots, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. But during the game itself, they don't miss. They really don't. And they've killed me a few times. And that's frustrating. Day and night cycle. We spoke about that. But no weather effects. We've spoken about that. Um, AI spots you way too easily. Uh, in the water, even in moss and leaves and dirt. We've already spoken about that. Um, the NPC dialogue is extremely repetitive. There was one sentence about a guy saying that he should get his specs or something. And I think I heard him say that like 50 times. It got very annoying. <laughs> it really did. There is way too much NPC repetitive uh, voice texting in this game way too much and they the easiest fix to that is they just sh they should have just added way more dialogues with the npcs way more um yes that obviously meant a little bit more recording time in the studio for the voice actors but at the end of the day it does help take away that repetitive boring 
sentence that keeps getting said over and over again. There's loads of sentences that you're going to hear about 50 times. Get used to it. <laughs> Get used to it. Texture glitches, we've already spoken about that. Movie Easter eggs, we've already spoken about that. Each upgrade that you do changes the appearance of the shark parts. I love that. I really, really, really love that. Every single time you upgrade the headpiece or the fin piece or the tail piece, it would evolve in its design as well and look really... When you max out your designs, they look so good. Uh, the blood clears up too quickly and there are no floating body parts. It's an 18 rated game, you know. It would have been nice if after you've munched down on a couple of humans that you actually see some of their body bits flowing around. That's just my... <laughs> I know it's a bit dark to say something like that, but that's just my, <laughs> that's just my personal preference. I'm a freaking killer shark, man. I want the water to be stained with blood. I want to swim through that blood as well and smirk while I'm doing it. Uh, but the blood clears up way too quickly and the NPC bodies just vanish after you've eaten them. Or after you've bitten, they just the rest of their body bits just disappear. And I think that there is a is that there's a missed opportunity. I think they should just they should just leave the blood and leave the body bits, um, unless you swim at like a certain distance and then it will disappear. I'm fine with that, but to not have those in the game, missed opportunity in my honest opinion. The spawning of the attack ships. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Once you've upset the public, <laughs> or once you've upset the um, uh, the fishermen, the game will spawn in the attack NPCs that hunt you down, and they spawn them right beside you, out of thin, thin air. They don't travel to you; they just like bloop 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 all around you, and that's it. And then you have to fight them. That's lazy, in my opinion. That is freaking lazy. What they should have done is use a, a pinging system within the game where the NPC um, knows where your last attack was and it pings it for them and then they and then they come into the scene and go to where you were and then they try and that's when they start their searches to try and find you. Not just spawn the freaking NPCs around the damn ca my character. That's that's silly, especially out of thin air as well. It don't look good for the game. Um would have been nice if there were no loading scenes between um, area segments. I think that could have been possible because the loading screens are like a second long. I, th I feel that they could probably do something where uh, they could just remove those loading screens. That would be pretty good. So you can swim around the whole game without ever getting hit with a loading screen. Unless it loads up a cutscene or loads up a, um, a dialogue part for the game itself. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure they could probably have done that. Co-op would have been nice. Yeah, we already spoke about no weather effect. Yeah, yeah blah, 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 blah. Oh, and the game is 100% achievement unlockable through one playthrough. So you don't have to do two, multiple playthroughs to get um, all the achievements. You can actually, I actually did all the achievements in one go, uh, not realizing it. And when I went to a ch uh, check my achievement list, it said one of the achievements was to get 100% in the game, which I've already done. And for some reason, that achievement hasn't popped yet. Which means it's, it's it's most likely an achievement bug. So they might have to roll down an update to give me that achievement. Or I might turn on my Xbox one day and it'll just pop by itself. <laughs> but I want that achievement. Trip, I want... Seriously. Trip, why I want my achievement. Give it to me. That's everything written down. And pretty much the review template completely broken down. Now it comes to... The ending bit. Is this game something I would recommend to people? Especially for its price point. Um, looking at the good and the bad. And what I would score it. So, would I recommend you guys go out and buy this game right now in its current pricing? I would say no. Um, I would say that the game... It, it, it is a fun game, don't get me wrong. It is a really good game to play. But I think its pricing doesn't value... I think I think the pricing doesn't outweigh the content that you get. I feel that this game is a £25 game tops, in my opinion. So $24.99, I think, would have been a much fairer price for the for the content that you get in this game. Um, 
unless they obviously plan on releasing DLC in the future that's free, then, you know, that's great. We all love free DLC. But I think £33 for the content that you get is a little bit high. $24.99, I would have been very comfortable playing, uh, paying. Uh, $29.99 maximum. Nothing above that, in my honest opinion. Um, obviously, looking at the good and the bad, you know, again... It, the game the game is definitely fun to play as a killer shark it really is but um the game is beautiful uh the soundtrack is average it, it it works with the game the cannibalism is great the gore is great uh the missions get very repetitive uh we saw some texture glitching as well which needs to be combed over and fixed um more customizing options would have been nice the story is is very predictable um so if I was going to rate the game, if I'm going to close this review and rate the game, the things that hurt this the most, in my opinion, um, I think the majority of it is, is nitpicks with the texture glitches that we spotted. Um, The AI is way too accurate, and that's stupid. No weather effects. It needs weather. It does need weather effects. It would have made for such a better game, especially Thunder and Lightning. That would have been, that would have been amazing. NPC dialogue is too repetitive. I love the movie, the movie Easter eggs. I really did. The blood cleans up too quickly. No floating body bits. That's a big disappointment. No co-op. Massive disappointment. If I was to review this game, multiplayer is not a make or break for me. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We're all different. Remember, we're all unique. I'm looking at, looking at it as a whole. Um, looking at it from the amount of content that they've given us. Um, I take pricing into consideration as well. Weather effects would have been fucking amazing. My god, weather effects would have been gorgeous. Could have really done the game. You could, like, can you imagine the waves and the tsunami and all that lot? That would have been amazing. That really would have. But I did have I did have a lot of fun. The, the, the amount of quests that repeat themselves, though, that really kills it for me. That really, really does. You do the same quest so often, it gets, it does get very boring very fast around that. So, I'm fighting between two scores. Fighting between two scores. Man Eater scores, in my honest opinion, a 7 out of 10. That's my opinion. That's my scoring. And that's the review done.